welcome viewers and welcome to Stride Piano Tips. I'm Jim Hessian and my wife Martha and I have put together this uh, video guide to uh, the elements of Stride Piano Playing and other classic jazz piano styles at the request of the YouTube viewers around the world, uh, all of the young piano players that uh, are starting to learn uh, how to play jazz in its many forms and uh, we get an awful lot of questions about the stride style as opposed to ragtime. So uh, let's just talk for a minute about the difference between the left hand and right hand of ragtime and stride. Uh, in ragtime, uh, the left hand pretty much relies on an alternating series of octaves and chords. It's the ragtime, as we said in a previous video, is very, uh, very structured the way it was set up uh, by people like Scott Joplin and, and Joe Lamb and James Scott. A very structured form of music, uh, primarily meant to be played as written, uh, although uh, many people did indeed take liberties uh, with the printed page. Uh, but what happened is that the, um, the stride era came in after ragtime had been predominant for about 20 years and the stride uh, pianist wanted to expand the sound, create a bigger sound and a more freewheeling improvisational sound to uh, the uh, piano style of the time. So what they did in the left hand is instead of relying on the octave chord, octave chord, octave, octave, they uh, expanded that octave to a tenth and uh, those of you with small hands fear not you can break your tenths but uh, the tenth also provided a harmonic element to that first and third beat of the measure and uh, it also gave it a uh, it spread out the uh, voicing in the left hand so uh, that it created a bigger sound. So uh, the other um, style that became heavily associated with stride uh, relied on low notes in the left hand alternating with the uh, chord around the middle of the keyboard. And that created the sound of a bass fiddle, which gave it a, like a booming sound. Now the right hand, you'll be surprised to know that uh, a lot of stride piano playing in the right hand had to do with the treatment of uh, thirds and fifths and uh, triads uh, surrounded by pivot notes. You would have like the interval of a third and instead of, if you had a couple of bars of music where you were playing a C chord, instead of going you would take the fifth above it, or another note, and rock it back and forth like that to uh, create a piano figure rather than just playing the third or the triad over and over. Uh, now. Even that can get a little dreary if it's just played over and over. So what we do there is we create harmonic tension by going back and forth. If your chord is continuing to be a C chord, for example, you go back and forth between the C chord and uh, its own 5-7, a G7, with a raised fifth. That way, you still retain the sound of the C chord throughout those measures uh, without it um, uh, interfering with the basic harmony. And at the same time, you've got that harmonic tension that keeps the piece moving and interesting. Now, when you go from the C chord to another chord, there are 
other adjustments that you have to make to get there. If you're going to the 5-7 chord, for example, you have to go through the diminished chord of the 5-7, of the upcoming chord, to get there. C, G diminished, G7, and then create some harmonic tension back to the G diminished, G7, back to the raised fifth on the G7, to the C. So that would go uh, in tempo, that would go. So by using the low note bass in the left hand or the or the tenths and the uh, what we call the pivoting on the thirds and the triads uh, in the right hand, you create one of the more famous sounds and and listen to Fats Waller's uh, style uh, for this uh, of stride piano.